Uh, as an investor, I would be nervous. We've had to we've had to be smart about how we run our business. A tough year for this industry. I personally just invested a significant amount into silver. You sound an awfully lot like Dan Connor from Roseanne. <laughs> Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Friendly reminder, guys, if this is your first time here and you like our content, please do subscribe to our channel, hit the bell to be updated on new content, and please do give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all your support. Housekeeping out of the way, we have with us today Ken Lewis, the CEO of AppMix, a well-known online dealer in precious metals products, headquartered in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, U.S. What started as one man selling his grandfather's coin collection has grown into a billion-dollar company with more than 200 employees. And we are delighted to have him here today as our guest. Good day, Ken, and welcome to SBTV. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Great. Glad we could have you. Uh, Ken, AppMix was founded back in 1999, and, and I'd like to congratulate you guys on your 20th anniversary of the company. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your, your background and what led you to, to join the precious metals industry? And of course, what is your personal favorite bar or coin at AppMix? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, kind of a funny story. My background is retail. I worked at a couple couple of retailers as well as Microsoft for three years and um, I had a recruiting firm that told me about a great opportunity to come out to Atmex uh, at the time we were looking to go public back in 2011 they wanted to be worldwide they wanted to expand and uh, thought my skills would align very well uh, so I came on to run the operations area um, and you know luck would have it um, Scott Thomas the founder of the company gave me an opportunity to really grow and develop across multiple departments to the point where I was CEO about three and a half years ago so um, so you know I think uh, my background strategic planning uh, financials uh, operational processes things like that and when you think about e-commerce and you think about the amount of customers we deal with uh, I think it really fit very well uh, I always like to think about it as you know when I walk into a retail store I look I like to look at how they set up the assortment yeah. and how the customer service is and and are you efficient to check out well doing an online business is no different you got to think about what you put in front of the customers how you serve them on the phones and shipping uh, how do you deal with disputes or issues that pop up and I think Atmex is one of the best if not the best in the world at doing that yeah absolutely um, hey favorite coin can't escape that one. okay uh, <laughs> I'd probably be a silver eagle guy um, you know I also like the Libertad I like the Libertad because the, the circulation is not as large um, so you can get premium appreciation on that one, but the silver eagle you just can't go wrong with. Uh, I personally own silver maples as well. Uh, sometimes, depending upon the market and the pricing, you can sometimes find maples might be a little bit less expensive. Yeah. Uh, but I stick with the sovereign coins primarily. Okay, here, you, yeah, silver eagles and the uh, gold buffaloes are are my favorite. Uh, you joined Atmix back in uh, 2011, I believe, which was the the final year of the gold and silver bull market. Can you tell us what you observed and learned about the market exuberance back in 2011 and the subsequent fall into the bear markets? And no, we're not going to say it's your fault when you came in 2011. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, you know, the timing in some ways couldn't be worse. As you know, I mean, 12 was a really tough year for this industry. Um, you know, I, I go back and look at the data, though. 13 was actually a great year. 15 was a great year um, as well. So so it wasn't like we've been in doldrums the whole time since 2011. We've had a couple of good years in there. Um, I think a lot of it is, you know, as, as the markets have changed, you know, you, you know, these all things run in cycles, right? So um, as you see here and you look at it, gold and silver demand, you, you had a lot of political events going on. You had the government, you know, facing some of the challenges of downgrading the debt in late, late 2011. Um, you know, you couldn't have a safe haven investment like precious metals be any more attractive in those times. Right now, you look at the market, look at the last few years, uh, the economy is doing fairly well. There's not as many tensions globally. Uh, the dollar you know, tends to be pretty strong. It's not surprising that, that precious metal pricing is down as well as maybe some of the demand for precious metals is not at the levels it was back in 11. Um, but, you know, we all know this thing changes. It goes and swings. And uh, I would not be surprised at some point if we start seeing some more resistance on the dollar, the stock market, and look at its valuations right now. How long can it carry on? 
Um, and, and so I think precious metals have their day coming. But, you know, frankly, we've had to reinvent ourselves as a company. We've had to go back and look at how we run our business. Uh, we had to make sure that we, you know, raised our service levels to levels we've never seen before. Um, you know, we, we were very prideful of the fact that we ship majority of orders same day from payment received. Uh, someone most, in, you know, people become used to that in Amazon, but in the precious metals industry, it's pretty unique. Um, and then everything else in terms of sophistication of our systems and what we offer, product assortment. We have over 20,000 products on our website nowadays. Um, so if you're looking for that unique product, more than likely we're going to be the guy that's going to have it in stock. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm always uh, <laughs> looking over your website. You guys got some pretty good stuff there. Um, but uh, gold and silver, are they money or investments or are they something else? That's a great question. I think depending on who you talk to, the, the answer can vary. I like to look at it as an investment. You know, I'm a seven, eight year guy in the industry. Um, the, the pitch I always make, I, I don't really want to give financial advice, but I just tell everybody, look at it as another asset in your portfolio. Think about diversification in your strategies, evaluate how much risk you want to have in your portfolio. And precious metals has a home in that portfolio, whether it's physical, whether it's digital, which we'll talk about some of the things we're doing on the digital space or whether it's paper and the GLD type products. Um, having a position in gold is a good portfolio strategy. I look at it as an investment. Um, some people like to look at it as, you know, they don't trust the government. They don't they don't believe uh, the fiscal system stable. I personally don't have a strong opinion on that one way or another. What I tell those customers is. We're here to serve you regardless of what your intentions are. Um, and we respect everyone's personal opinions about things like that. Okay. Yeah, the um, the bear market, it's, it's pretty much taking a toll on, on a lot of retail buyers of bullion, given that prices have been uh, somewhat sideways yeah. over the last few years. What do you tell new buyers who are unsure if they should start putting gold and silver into their portfolio? You know, I tell you, it's like I said, it's a diversification strategy. If you want to hold bonds, if you want to hold cash, if you believe in real estate, then you should look at gold and silver. Um, you know, we have a stat we like to quote, but if you go back to 2020 and you look at the performance of various asset classes uh, outside of real estate, gold and silver has outperformed, excuse me, gold specifically, is the second highest performing asset class since the year 2000. Um, it has, has stability to it. It's a nice play within a portfolio. Um, you know, frankly, you know, I personally just invested a significant amount into silver recently because when it went sub $15, I'm convinced it's not going to stay there. I'm convinced it's going to go up over the long run, but that's just my personal belief. Uh, do I feel it's going to happen in three months and it's going to happen in a week? It's going to happen in a year. I'm not sure. I just know over the long term, it's a wise investment. Just like when oil went below $50, you know what? Long term, if you think long term, you should be in oil below $50. Why is gold and silver any different? How do you see precious metals performing this year, 2019? You know, if you had asked me that question in January, February, I would say I think it's going to be a really good year for us. Um, you know, 17 was a really tough year in our industry. 18 had about a 10% improvement uh, when we look at the numbers. Um, 19 was off to a great start, really was. Uh, but the last 30 days, we've seen a slowdown in, in consumer demand a little bit. And I think that's directly tied to the equities markets. I mean, look, the, the equities markets year to date are up 17.4 percent, the S&P. Hard to compete against that asset class, if you will. Um, but it's going to face some resistance. I just don't know when that's going to happen. Um, you know, I, I like to look at the trade scenarios out there. Well, honestly, Trump's done a nice job in starting to stabilize some of that and show some progress. Um, I look at the GDP and the growth, and you know we're doing a nice job there right now. Yeah. Um, you go look at the dollar. Look at look at what's done more recently in the last few weeks. It's definitely trading at a higher point again. Um, so we're going to have to see some resistance in those areas for precious metals to get back in vogue. Um, I do think the back half of the year um, could be an opportunity. Uh, I also think precious metals are at a great buying point. I mean, yeah. at the level point it's at now, I mean, could it go lower? I'm sure it could. Um, but all the things I read, all the analyst reports I read, seems to believe that gold and silver is going to go up over the next few years. Now's a great entry point for anyone to get in. Yeah, I completely agree. It's, it's definitely a good entry point. And um, one of the questions we always run across is uh, if uh, I should be buying bars or if I should be buying coins and which might be a better yeah. buy. Um, how do you advise your clients on this question? You know, I think it, I think it really depends. Um, you know, I, I've heard arguments both ways. Um, I like to think about is you can buy precious metals three ways. You can buy it physical, you can buy it digital, and you can buy it on paper. 
Um, when you talk about physical, I tend to believe that people migrate to the low price or low premium products, but I do believe that sovereign products over the long term are going to perform better. Um, you're going to have a home for them, if you will. Uh, with that said, uh, gold bars uh, and, and, and really, not really gold, silver rounds, I think silver bars and silver, silver rounds, silver bars and gold bars tend to do from a premium standpoint fairly well. But when you go to sell them, you're going to find that in more recent times, the premium when you, you get paid for them when you go to sell, that spread can be a little, little bit larger than the coins. Um, and so like a gold eagle might run you 250 over spot. You go to sell it depending upon your situation, how much volume you had to sell, the retailer's in stock position. You could be getting a dollar fifty, if you will, for that. So you had a dollar spread. You go out and buy a silver bar at a dollar over, you might be getting a dollar back a spot when you go to sell it. Uh, in today's times. So that's a two dollar spread. So you want the tightest spread possible as a way to educate right. consumers. Coins tend to do a little bit better on that in the long run. Uh, but depending on markets, depending on the retailer you're dealing with, you might be able to time it right where bars can actually make sense. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of, of coins and our, our favorite coin, the civil silver eagle. Uh, we saw the US mint, I believe, back in uh, September twenty eighteen and again this year, February twenty nineteen, halt the sales of silver eagles. Are we seeing a shortage of silver, and what's your take as to why we had the halt? You know, I think it's been written about out there. It's it's really a direct reflection on two things. I think they didn't predict demand to the levels that they expected in the early part of the year, and then they had a supplier, um, you know, uh, a supply chain issue where where basically the supply chain uh, was not as um, um, you know consistent as it had been. And part of that, the U.S. Mint will tell you, is they're doing, because what happens is when the U.S. Mint, they go out and they put all these orders in, they get all these blanks in, and then they mint it themselves. Well, they're trying to manage their inventory levels as well. And so what they'll do is they'll stop ordering blanks all of a sudden. Well, for a mint to be able to make blanks for the U.S. Mint, they need consistency because they have to hire people. They have all the investments they've made in capital. But sometimes the mint will take you down to almost nothing. And then so what you have to do is you have to let people go. And then all of a sudden the mint comes in three weeks later and they want to buy a lot of volume. Well, now you don't have the people, you don't have the resources to make the volumes that they're wanting. So it's really a supply chain issue. It's not a it's not a silver availability issue. It's more about getting blanks. And um, and, and a lot of it has to do with just the predictability of our markets. Uh, in the old days, the mint would hold a lot more inventory than they do today. Um, you know, when we saw the drawback or the pullback in demand the last two years, I think the mint's a little hesitant to carry as many blanks as they used to, or even as many struck product as they used to. So they're a little bit more cautious in how much inventory they're carrying because they don't want to get to the end of 19 and have a whole bunch of inventory sitting around and have to find a home for it. So a little bit of them being more cautious, a little bit of demand being greater, and definitely I would argue the supply chain has probably been the biggest issue uh, for them not having the inventory in stock. You touched a bit on a. <clears throat> 2017 being a, a little bit of a, a rough year for, for precious metals, um, possibly because in 2016, we saw a lot of uh, precious metals owners move over in, into crypto and uh, a lot of bullion dealers, they did see uh, sales slide somewhat. And you mentioned that was the case for, for Atmex slightly a, a bit during, during that time. How did you folks sure. come through it? Well, first and foremost, we, we've looked at a lot of research papers. We're not convinced crypto took a lot of demand away from precious metals. Okay. Um, and even today, I don't think it's taking much away from it at all. Uh, there was a run where people were kind of the gambling mentality on crypto where where they were loving those percent rises and, and the volatility and wanted to get in the low point and make a whole bunch of money. Um, I'm not saying those days are done, but I think the level of volatility you saw there or the potential upside is not like what it is um, today. Yeah. I think also people realize there's no underlying asset behind a lot of the crypto. There's there's not a physical product backing it. What's the intrinsic value? What's it tied to? Uh, you're truly gambling. So, so I don't think crypto really hurt us as much. I think really it was a byproduct of really a couple things. First and foremost, and, and I didn't predict this, um, but when our presidency changed in the U.S., um, I believe in a certain investor type decided they wanted to get back into the markets. Um, 17 was actually a huge year in buying back metals. Um, we actually had one of our best years ever because we were buying back so much product from consumers because they were wanting to redeploy those investments yeah. into the equities markets. Um, and you know what? They were right. 
I mean, look how well the equities markets have performed since 17. Uh, so I think a little bit of was the presence of the change, a little bit of velocity change in where you want to put your money. Um, and then I think, you know, the other challenge for all of us right now is is getting your hands around the, the global the, the global situation and just where are we at and where are we going? Um you know, 17 was a more stable year. 18, you know, the, the, about the summer and fall of 18, a lot of events going on. You had issues with China on the trade side. You had some challenges with uh, which interest rates and what was being talked about there. And we actually had a really good uh, three to four months there, solid three to four months. Felt like, frankly, back to 15 and 13 times. So I think it's, uh, you know, we've had to we've had to be smart about how we run our business and make sure we don't put all our eggs in one basket and try to diversify. Uh, whether that be our portfolio, whether that be our digital product we're launching, um, whether that be a number of other things. We just have to be very smart and, and diversify our business further. Okay, you, uh, you mentioned uh, cryptocurrencies and, and intrinsic values. Do you view cryptocurrencies as money? You know, I, I think the crypto products have opened up the door for some really neat things for the long term. Uh, I think the blockchain, and as you research the blockchain, has a lot of suitability for a number of types of things in our business. Um, I do believe crypto concept can be a currency. Um, you know, if you think about it, you know, a Bitcoin being able to use to buy groceries can be a very efficient way of executing, um, if you will, a trade. Um, but the technology is not quite there yet. And frankly, cryptos have an issue with with uh, regulatory issues. I mean, they're, you know. Um, you know, right now, you know, it's, it's a challenge for the SEC and the FTC and others to get comfortable with where cryptos are at. So I think that they've got to clear a few hurdles. Uh, as an investor, I would be nervous, depending on the crypto you're buying, is the asset even going to be there tomorrow? But in terms of opening up transactions, blockchain technology, efficiency of using your mobile device, I think it's really brought some great new advancements to the market that I think will get leveraged over the long term. We see a lot of... Uh Crypto guys, they, they absolutely do not like gold, silver. We, we see gold and silver guys, they just seem to not like crypto. But yeah, uh, yeah. do you see, uh, let's say, a, a new monetary system coming in where perhaps crypto will be backed by gold? Well, some are trying it, um, you know, and, and, and they're using the token concept and they're doing ICOs and, and they're saying they're backed by metal. Um, but, we, but the regulatory side still hasn't gotten right with it. I mean, uh, that's the issue. Um, you know, uh, if you don't mind, I'll take a second here. You know, we just launched a digital product that is as close to crypto as you can get, in my opinion. Um, now, it doesn't allow peer to peer trading yet because, frankly, peer to peer trading is, is your money, hand, money transmitter and you, you have regulatory issues and there's a lot of challenges with that. But, but having a gold backed product that can be accessed on a blockchain that's digitally, if you will, meaning instant, instant trades, buy and sell. I do think those days are here, and we're going to see more of that type of product in the market. Let's get into that. Uh, one gold. Um, Atmex has always uh, retailed physical precious metals, but uh, recently the company has partnered, I believe, with Sprott to offer customers a digital product called One Gold. Can you explain what One Gold is, how it works, and what are the benefits? Well, you nailed it about crypto. We, we saw the crypto landscape and we analyzed it very, very closely. And we do believe there's some elements of crypto that are very valuable to consumers. Um, we partnered with a company called Tradewin out of New York. Um, they're backed by IEX, so they're a very established, uh, known company uh, with a lot of great technology. And they brought the blockchain into play. We partnered with Sprott. Actually, we're, we're, we're co-investors in, into this product. And then finally, we worked with the Royal Canadian Mint up in Canada. And so what we've done is, uh, at a high level for your listeners, is we procure product in at the Royal Canadian Mint. When we procure that metal, we put it on the blockchain using trade wind technology. Um, so that's the first step. Second step is we build a beautiful front end that is very much like Coinbase. And we would challenge your customers to go give it a run. And they'll find it's very easy to open an account, very easy to do all the steps you need to to be able to transact. When you transact, we assign ownership on the blockchain of that gold that I already have bought. We assign ownership down to the individual level. Um, so the blockchain keeps track, the ledger keeps track of who owns what. The Royal Canadian Mint stands behind the metal being there at all times. Right. We can't sell, very important point, we can't sell any metal we don't have on the blockchain. And we can't get on the blockchain unless we buy it. 
through the Royal Canadian Mint and wholesalers up in, up in Canada. So it's a, it's a win-win for consumers knowing the metal's always there, has their name on it, if you will. But also importantly is that front-end technology. What we find is you ask me what coins or bars or uh, which product. A lot of customers, when they buy physical, it's a little confusing for them. And, and they're not buying it necessarily because they want to hold it. They're buying it because they want to have exposure to precious metals. But they don't like like, they don't like ETFs, you know, for, for various reasons, ETFs, they trade at discounts or premiums, they have fees attached to them, uh, they just don't, they don't feel comfortable with it, they don't feel like the metal or the asset's always there. So the digital product gives you a chance to do both. Um, the front end tool, like I said, it does two factor authorization, it has email confirmation, it allows you to link your bank account, it allows you to buy $10 of gold a week, a day, and it will actually do it down to three decimal points on gold. Um, you know, it allows you to instantaneously sell and buy, uh, buy and sell, uh, 24 seven. And then finally, one of the coolest things is if you want to buy that gold Eagle, put your money in digital gold or, or one gold, and then, you know what, trade your digital gold for physical and we'll ship it to your home same day. So it gives you all the benefits of physical at the same time, leveraging some of the crypto concepts, um, to bring a, what we think is a, a new approach to, to precious metals ownership. Just to be clear for, for our listeners, when someone holds uh, one gold, digital gold or, or silver, they do own the, the gold or silver backing yeah. the digital asset. They do, and they're 100% protected. Um, the government of Canada is standing behind it for the product that we currently have on our, on our, um, uh, uh, our marketplace. We're going to be adding additional products over time. We've already secured Lloyd's of London's uh, insurance policies to make sure consumers are always protected. And look, one of the important things also in the crypto space or even in our space is you need to know who you're doing business with. Yeah. Um, I've done over $15 billion in business um, since we we started. Sprott has $7 billion under management. We have balance sheets that, you know, you can trust in and know you're doing business with someone that is of a size and, and of an integrity that you want to do business with. A lot of the cryptos out there, you don't know who's behind it. You don't know, have, you don't have the security that comes with doing business with an Amex or a Sprott. Okay. Um, ju just to go a bit deeper, uh, will a bar with a specific serial number be assigned to the customer or is it more like a, a customer has a certain weight of gold? It's weight. It's a pooled position. So it can be in different forms. And it's very important to note here. We did evaluate having bars with numbers on them. Well, first, you want to buy a bar with a number on it, you have to buy in, in full ounce quantities. We wanted you to be able to buy fractional ownership because yeah. we do believe, and we've seen it, 45% of our transactions are repeat transactions where they set it up on a continuity program where they buy every week, every day, and they just go out and buy a certain dollar amount. Well, you couldn't do that if you're buying exact bars with serial numbers on them, first and foremost. Secondly is on the pool position, it's a lot lower cost to you. Yeah. So, for example, today, you can buy silver at four cents over spot. That's our price, four cents over spot, and, and we charge you what is you know we charge you a quarterly storage fee. But when you start looking at your investment, it's a rounding error in the schemes of the math, and we do believe it's cheaper than ETFs. But if I had gone out and done fabricated finished bars with serial numbers on them, I couldn't offer it at four cents. Right. It'd be a much higher cost, and we feel like you know what the, the metal's there, you know you own it, you know it's backed by entities like the Royal Canadian Mint. You should have that confidence. You shouldn't need a serial number per se. And like I said earlier, you want to buy a bar, take your digital, convert it to a gold bar, and I'll ship it to your home right on the right on the website. Uh, where a lot of companies who've done this, they make it very difficult for you to convert to physical. We don't have a problem with it at all. Matter of fact, we actually offer our best tiered price for Matmex on the one gold platform. So you can actually get the best price we offer on a one ounce gold bar if you so choose. Okay, that, that's that's a great point, Ken, because I think a lot of guys, uh, when they think of digital gold, they, they have a concern about trying to get that digital back into physical, but you folks seem to have solved that issue. And we made it a trade, too, which is very important. So you can take your cost basis, um, if you're tracking that, and you can roll it from digital into physical because it's technically you're buying, you're doing a trade. You're trading digital gold for physical gold in one process. And that four cents over spot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four cents over spot is, is the price right now on the website. That's that that that, that that's amazing, Ken. I'm, I can't get my mind around that, but um, I might have to be a customer. But 
What What are the development plans in in the future for One Gold in the the next few years? Sure, sure. Well, we're actually working on a product, and um, you know, it's a little early in the game, but the biggest challenge on precious metals is um, they they don't offer they don't offer a yield. They don't they don't you know it's a it's a an asset that you'd like to get some you'd like to make money on more than just how it performs. Uh, we're working on a concept where we hope maybe we can offer a yield product at one point down the road. And and for your listeners, I mean, I'm going to explain very quickly why you can do that. Today, I have I have $100 million in metal sitting in my vault downstairs today. Um, I have about $55 million of that I actually um, borrow against, and I segregate that in my vaults uh, with a very, very large bank. And the bank then gives me cash for that metal. Uh, I pay a fee for that. Uh, let's say, you know, I pay a fee, one, two percent, somewhere in that range. We're trying to find a way where the customer could own the metal rather than the bank. Yeah. And I can pay the customer fee rather than the bank a fee. So you can have exposure to metal. <clears throat> You'd have it always segregated. It'd be fully insured. It'd be audited by an independent third party to know the metal's always there. Right. Um, and we'd be able to offer a yield potentially. Um, and if we can't offer yield, we know uh, regulatory things you have to work through and make sure you're doing something that's completely, from a regulatory standpoint, 100% fair and, 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 and legal. If we can't do a yield for whatever reason because we consider that security, the worst case is we offer no fees. So it would be literally you buy metal at spot and you, um, and you pay no fees. That's the worst case scenario. So that's a product we're working on. The other thing we're working on is how you can borrow against your metals down the road. So um, a lot of people think about taking a, a home equity line on their on their mortgage. And we like to tell people, geez, think how hard that is. What if you could go to your mobile device, bring up your asset balance, so that you have 20000 in metal sitting there, ask that you want to borrow 10000 on up against that. I've already got your AML because you've cleared a threshold at 20000 where I'll get your AML information. Basically, you go in and say, I would like to borrow 10000 I'd like to borrow it um, you know, today. We can do a quick evaluation, matter, matter of seconds, say, yes, you're done. Here's your $10,000. We'll deposit into your one gold account because you can link your bank account. You just transfer it from your one gold to your bank account, and you're done. And you literally just borrowed money in a matter of seconds yeah. rather than going through the whole process with the banks of getting appraisals and, and, and paperwork and, and, and the like. So, uh, look, we're – you know, I would tell people be be smart about it. You know, borrowing against metal is something you need to make sure is right for you. But um, but you know, it might be an asset you can leverage in a bigger way, both through a yield product like I mentioned, or even being able to borrow against it. Uh, the final thing is a credit card. Uh, we're working on a concept where you can take a debit card into your grocery store and buy your groceries with gold. Okay, Ken, we're going to have. Kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to be keeping an eye on this, my friend. <laughs> But, um, so we're I, working on a lot of things. Here. We, sorry to interrupt you, but we're working on a lot of things. None of this stuff's cemented yet. Uh, we have a roadmap. Um, one gold is not just going to be what it is today is what I would tell you. More metals, more locations, more currencies, credit cards or debit cards, yields, uh, lending. All of these things are in our 12 to 24 month roadmap. Okay. So when uh, when people search this up online, I, I think they're also going to come across the vault chain. Um, can you explain maybe one more time if, if people missed it, the relationship between One Gold and Vault Chain? Yeah. One Gold is a marketplace. We will sell a number of digital products over time. Uh, vault Chain is a specific product that Tradewind has worked on with the Royal Canadian Met. So you can technically buy Vault Chain at any number of retailers. You'll find our pricing is the best, though. I will say that straight up. Uh, but you'll, you'll, what you do is, is, is the blockchain technology that's used uh, for the, with the Royal Canadian Mint is what kind of is, 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 uh, is vault chain. Now, we're working with Tradewind on future products that we may put on the blockchain. We also are evaluating whether the blockchain is perceived as their value in the perception of the, of the consumer. As you can imagine, that technology costs money. Um, we would love to have everything on a blockchain, but at some point we've got to make sure we also offer the best pricing and convenience to consumers. So we're evaluating using Tradewind technology for other products down the road that won't be called Vault Chain. It would be called whatever we decide to brand it. But very, very important, Vault Chain is a product from the Royal Canadian Mint with Tradewinds that's housed at the Royal Canadian Mint. It's gold and silver, and we sell it on our site today. Okay, Ken, I'm, I've always been a fan of AppMix and You've just cemented me even more being an AppMix fan. Um, but before we wrap up, can you let our, our listeners know more about AppMix and what trends do you see with the precious metals markets? 
You know, I'll tell you, um, we, we're seeing that, you know, it's a little softer in the last 30 days. Um, business year to date is better than it was in 18, better than it was in 17, uh, which is encouraging. Um, we are seeing silver demand on the retail side suffering a little bit more than gold. Uh, more specifically, uh, production silver. So silver bars, silver rounds. They're not selling nearly as well as we would like compared to previous years. Um, sovereign coins are holding up strong on silver, and gold products are doing very, very well. Um, we're seeing a migration to smaller mintages that tend to have a little bit higher premium, but also have the ability to uh, appreciate in value due to their rarity or scarcity. Um, you know, we, we for example, we do a product with the Perth Mint. Uh, we, we call it a Swan, and we only have a twenty-five thousand mintage. Well. The kookaburra, the coal, has a 500,000 minage. So you're getting the same quality. You're, you're getting it at a little bit higher premium than the kooka koala. But we've seen that that product's trading for $100 right now when the metal value is only 15 when you go onto eBay. So there's a chance to get into it at 30, 35, 40 bucks and maybe hold a coin that might be worth, you know, 80, 90, 100 bucks down the road because of its scarcity. Uh, and we're seeing that type of product really start to come on strong lately, uh, not to mention the beauty of the product. You know, it's a very, very appealing product. And that's just that's just one example of 15 or 20 I could give you where we're having small mintages that have nice and premium appreciation that are really beautiful coins that are backed by governments you recognize. Um, and that's also doing very well for us over the last really frankly couple last couple of years. Um, and then one gold's done well. Um, yeah. You know, you know, we we like to say this. If you're a physical buyer and you like having your metal where you can touch it, then please, please, please buy from Atmax. We'll take care of you. You'll have a quality product. You know you, we're a company you can trust. If you want broader exposure to metal you know, and you're thinking about owning an ETF, so our marketing pitch is if you thought about owning an ETF, please give Digital Gold a try because we think it can be lower cost. You know it's backed by metal at all times. You can convert to physical, all things we talked about already, and we're seeing that product start to get some traction. Um, what's amazing is only about 20% of our one gold customers are Atmex customers. So we do believe we're bringing a new type of customer into the yeah. market, uh, which is exactly what we intended to do. Because if we can just increase demand for metals as a whole, we all win. Whether that's digital, physical, or paper, we all win. And ETFs, man, they've skyrocketed over the last 10 years. The amount of product of dollars that are into ETFs is mind-boggling. Why can't we do this thing with digital over time, too? So, so our digital product's doing well. Um, you know, I think we're something north of 2000 customers in about four months since we've been live, uh, which isn't, which isn't too bad. Uh, we're exceeding our expectations and, you know, we hope your listeners might give it a run. One thing we're doing on, on one goal, because, you know, working with technology can be confusing. And so we said to consumers on one goal, we'll give you $5 free just to try the platform. So go create your login. You have $5, buy and sell that $5, buy and sell gold and silver because you can do it in fractional elements and just go live the experience. And if you don't walk away impressed, uh, I'll be shocked uh, and you'll see just how easy it is to use. And then I think then you'll become a long-term customer with way more than $5. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be impressed, Ken. Uh, but do you have, let's say, a, a Twitter handle that guys can follow you on? You know, I'm just now starting to embrace social media, to be honest with you. The podcast... Okay. I think you're my maybe 15th podcast I've done this year. Um, I had never done a podcast previously. Uh, I probably will look into it. I will say Atmex is and One Gold are very engaged on social right now. Um, I've got to probably step up and make myself more available out there as well. Just haven't done it quite yet. Yeah, I've, I've seen a couple of your interviews and uh, I looked at the comments, Ken, and I've been seeing guys say you sound an awfully lot like Dan Connor from Roseanne. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before, but that's funny. <laughs> uh, okay, Ken Lewis, we, we appreciate the time you've given us, and uh, we hope to get you back on and see how One Gold is doing. Wish you all the best with that. Absolutely. absolutely. Thanks again. That was Ken Lewis, CEO of AppMex. To find out more about AppMex, please visit AppMex.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the SBTV channel to be updated on new content, and do also check out the SBTV podcast on iTunes and Spotify.